Coming to you from sunny California and the Great White North. Get ready. We are breaking down the obstacles on the Armchair Ninja Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Armchair Ninja Podcast. It is Saturday, April 14th, 2018. My name is Rich, and joining me once again is Bijan. How are you making out? I'm good, man. And guess what, Rich? What? Champ is here! Ah, that was a fail! It's up with my bell. Let's try that again. Champ is here! Oh, yeah! I feel like I couldn't really claim any victory from this no matter what happened because I was totally on board, Iron Grip, taking it. But I think you actually called it as well that, you know what, it was not quite the blowout that I was expecting. So, yeah, I'll no, give you that boy. double victory for you on that one. More, more than anything else, I think it was the, like the viewers one. I have to say, this has got to be one of the funnest episodes of the season. Maybe best episode of the season so far. Very, very close. We had very, very strong teams, very strong runs and entertaining, like just all around a great package. And uh, yeah, this Kyle Soderman fella. He's going places. <laughs> he also takes, definitely takes a page out of your book for how to approach the chorus, which is Dude, for real. throw some elbows, get in there, mix it up. You, <laughs> you can get it done. You just got to push through. Dude, both teams were, though. Man, we're going to get into it, but like people were going ham on this episode. Like This is the stuff I wanted to see. I was cheering, hooting and hollering all along. Like I was loving every second of it. People were definitely, definitely fighting for, for the win. And we're doing it again. I didn't mention that we are talking about Ninja vs. Ninja, Episode 7, to be clear. Oh Come on, y'all. y'all. You guys know what we're, we're covering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just for the record. Just so everyone knows. I know, I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's let's get into the actual episode here. We had, kicking it off, the Expendables vs. the Lin- Lizard Kings. That is Kevin Bull, Maggie Thorne, and Thaddeus Roback versus Hunter Gerard, Sarah Schoback, and Kyle Soderman. Yeah, really good, like, all around very, very good ninjas. You know, a lot of name ninjas, um, definitely some we've heard on the regional circuits that are coming up. Just all around, um, I was I was really looking forward to these matchups. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, they played it up as, you know, the Expendables being the favorites, and maybe they were. I guess in some respects they were. Uh, but we knew the yeah. Lizard Kings was a strong team. We knew what they could do, and they proved it because they did a really fantastic job. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, if you know uh, Expendables are good, it could have gone either way, I guess, but I wouldn't really consider Expendables, like, way higher than the Lizard Kings in any facet of it. I was really, I I, I shouldn't say surprised, that's the wrong term, because we saw him on Ultimate Beastmaster, but I guess I, I was very entertained by the fact that Kyle, so- Kyle Soderman so much gave it as all. I mean, he was screaming, oh, yeah. like hooting and hollering. Like, dude, really had all that passion. Everything we saw from the entertainment value of, of UBM, like he brought it to this. And I could see him becoming a major star when the main season of American Ninja Warrior comes. Like, if he does this kind of stuff, it, he's going places definitely. But you know, not just him. I mean, uh, really, a lot of the Lizard Kings. They were really show like showing off what they're capable of. I I really enjoyed them. Any any matchups or anything that really stood out to you? Yeah, I mean the first one of them the whole night, Kevin Bull versus Kyle Soderman was insane. Like those guys were both in it to win it. They did not want to give up any like a square inch of that space. Kevin's grabbing onto his, you know, Kyle's ring. They looked like they were angry, like they were competing hard to Dude, reach that buzzer going first. At it. <laughs> Was this the one where Kevin Bull like swung off of Kyle's ring and just like completely passed him up? Yeah, that would be the one. Oh my god, that was so amazing, y'all! So like straight up, like Kyle goes into it, and I felt like Kyle was being like the antagonist, right? Like Kyle's yeah. kind of blocking Kevin, and Kevin Bull, like a straight up G, is like all right, and he straight up snatches Kyle Soderman's ring from him and kicks out. That was so dope, like just like a straight boss he's like just showing up the kid so to speak you know i loved every ounce of that but it went back and forth back and forth because it ended with uh i think kyle winning right yeah it's unbelievable kyle actually ended up winning it after that because he was able to catch up and pull ahead like it was so back and forth like a fantastic race 
and the whole time I was thinking like Bijan is gonna love this race. It would be like one of his favorites of the season for sure. Dude, I was freaking out. It had everything. It had the fighting. It had straight up snatching from one another. It had a back and forth in terms of like the lead. It had people going for it. Um, just all around, I loved it. And Kyle Soderman, by the way, pressed <laughs> Kevin Bull's buzzer on his side. <laughs> just everything yeah. around is just so dope. Didn't he run up his side too? Like he, yeah, like, just, yeah. just shade going back and forth, man. <laughs> yeah, there was there was no uh, love given. Uh, actually, you know what? You've got the episode of. Did he like chest bump him or like like get right in his face as he came up too? It seemed like it if I when I saw it at a glance. Yeah, so so they kind of like you know uh, how do I say this? They kind of cross paths right after Kyle presses the button. You know, Kevin Bull's running up that same path. Because Kevin Bull's on his side, and they they kind of chest bump, but really not like at each other. Because Kyle is going straight towards the crowd, probably toward his team. It might be Akbar and Matt, but my guess is he's like going out to his teammates. Um, he's just excited. Hit like his face isn't even towards Kevin Bull. Gotcha. It was just incidental, basically. Yeah, it kind of looks like if you're looking at all the like everything going on you might you know perceive it as like oh they're antagonistic they probably didn't like each other but my guess is like they weren't even even thinking that kyle was just so excited that's my guess okay cool i'll tell you this though um the next matchup like maggie thorne they got a little vignette of maggie thorne running across like a row of like 10 uh what do you call it not trampolines what what are (laughs) the treadmills yeah, 10 treadmills, like, sideways running across them. Do not do that, y'all. Please don't do that. I'm like, what? <laughs> it doesn't matter how slow you're going on those things. That is a very quick way of hurting yourself. <laughs> you just need to slip once to flip over and slam the side of your head into one of those things. Don't do that. I was really surprised they showed it because it did seem insanely dangerous. Like, it just seemed like something you should not be encouraging people to do. And I missed that. Like, they yeah. say that went viral. I didn't see that at all. I mean, I don't know. I, I apparently need to follow more ninjas. But that said, I mean, I, I, I would just be screaming if I saw it anyways. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't you, think you want to know one thing I won't be showing my nephew and nieces that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was a pretty good race. Sarah ended up falling on the floating tiles. Sarah was not quite up to the skill level we've seen her at before. She did not have a good night. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about it. It, it could be many things. I, I, I can't knock her. She was up against some tough talent. To be honest with you, that said, I mean, we got to talk about the fact they were also going at it on those rings. I mean, you want to talk about a complete win in terms of an obstacle this season? It's got to be those rings because everybody is going like hardcore on those things, like just bashing into each other, fighting for it. I love it. But yeah, like Maggie Thorne almost pretty much elbows poor Sarah in the face, dude. I loved it. Yeah, I come to think of it, Sarah ended up falling trying to catch up. I find like. Once the first person goes across, those tiles are bouncing around so much, it's it must be really tough to kind of get your footing after that. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm, I was just so in love by the fact that they were fighting for those rings. <laughs> but w- once again, at a, after a certain point, Sarah kind of just, like, pulls herself out of the way so Maggie yeah, can go ahead. Did. No. Yeah. Just just kick, wrap your leg around her, throw her down into the water. I don't care if you just, like, put your leg up on her head and just, like, pull down. I don't care. Just do it. <laughs> it seems like more of them should be going further into it. Like, they're trying to dismount some from so far back. Once you're banging into somebody, you know, like, I feel like you should take another peg or two to get your dismount. I mean, I have a guess of why, because I've done rings like that. And I'll tell you right now, once you start going upward, those things suck. Like, oh, okay. it drains so much out of you. It's way easier to go, like, downward or, you know, straight horizontal. But once you start going up, it's far more of a swing up to do. So I'm I'm guessing they don't want to expend that kind of energy. Okay. So uh, other than that, I mean, 100 did fantastic. No, you know, no no big surprise there. He just got ahead and, and won against Thaddeus. It was not much of a competition on that particular. Yeah, that was, that was just a blowout, man. Yeah. Um, The Relay. <laughs> what did you think of the relay? With the relay, honestly, it was very even until the point where Hunter was going against Kevin Bull. And Hunter just got a little bit ahead of him on those floating steps or floating tiles. And Kevin was going like right after him on the same path on the floating tiles. And I don't know if you noticed this, Rich, but I've seen kind of a theme when it comes to that that obstacle where if you take the same exact path right after somebody takes it, where those things are still bouncing up and down, you know, like spring around, 
like a lot of people fall immediately doing that. It's not a guaranteed thing, but I, I've seen like the failure rate much higher at that point, just because they're no longer stationary. They're kind of all over the place. So my guess is that's what happened. Just Kevin Bull just lost footing for multiple two to reasons. And at that point, it was kind of like, you know, the the next point where I, I forget whoever was with, it was Thaddeus with with Kevin Bull's team, right? Yeah. Thaddeus is going up against Kyle in the, in the final portion. But the problem is, is that he has to make up a five second deficit. So Thaddeus just goes for broke and goes way too far into that. Which episode, which obstacle was that? Flying shelf grab. Yeah, the flying shelf, shelf grab. I think he just went too far and he failed at it. But you know what? He went for it. So what can you do? He wasn't going to go up against Kyle just going easy, right? So yeah, he, he went no for hope. it. He didn't make it, but it's whatever. Yeah, exactly. That's what you got to do. Um, it makes for some epic moments and some big falls. Uh, yeah, honestly, honestly, the, the the run was over once once Kevin Bull fell. Yeah, yeah, There's, you're not going to make that up, especially with uh, Kyle in the last part of the course. It's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. That said, I mean Kyle's Kyle's energy was infectious. The dude's just screaming around. I I love it. I don't know. They they might need to work on his story, <laughs> his vignette. It's just it's <laughs> well, I, I mean, you know I, I love you, Kyle, and everything, but it's the same story we hear from everything. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a hater, but it's like how many stories do we have to hear from Midwest? Oh, I work on my family's blah blah blah, and I do this. And, well, you know, I, I'm I like think, Kyle Soderman does more than that. Come on, y'all. Well, here's the thing, right? Well, he's the course tester, right? He's the guy that's never been on an obstacle course before now right yeah. not in some high level competition like this yeah it's kind of sad <laughs> that they have to do that but yeah it's what it, it doesn't leave them with a whole lot to work from i guess there there's so many more avenues for kyle's story i feel, I feel like but yeah it's whatever uh so then we moved on to iron grip versus the invincibles pretty much one as i expected with one slight hiccup with tiana it was uh like matisse was just as fast i remember and matter of fact i had the fastest time of the night no i think to matisse like opened some eyes i mean he he, we all remember like we the hardcores remember him from college into warrior but you have to remember like i feel like a lot of people still don't know who matisse is and now he's starting to come out on his own i mean really this episode was the night for matisse and kyle soderman those were the two standout names and uh, I, I don't know. He looked phenomenal. He, he, you know, he's got such a great look. Like, a, he's kind of like, he is a kid. He's 19. And, and just like the, the hat backwards and everything, he's got his own style and look. And he stands out from the crowd. And that's one thing you definitely want. Which is even harder to do, seeing of how both the Invincibles and the Iron Grip had the same damn outfits, pretty much. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know was... what they were thinking doing that. But... You know what? You know, we got to give a quick shout out here because I feel like, Victor Juarez had like an amazing run, incredibly fast. Yeah, he did. Just wasn't quite fast enough. Like that, that dude really did a good job of keeping up. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the matchup overall was pretty lopsided. Daniel ended up crushing it. Tiana ended up falling on her dismount of the rings. Uh, that got fast forwarded. Yeah, which... that surprised me though, because Tiana is very strong, especially when it comes to grip. I mean. It, it... Jokes aside, she's from Iron Grip and everything, like the team. Right. But, like, really, she does train a whole lot when it comes to upper body. If there was one area I, w- I w- didn't expect her to fail at was that. And just re-watching it now, it looks more like it was an error in transition where she just didn't get enough swing, yeah. less of, you know, losing her, her grip on it. Exactly. I, I mean, that was, like, a simple slip-up I think anyone could make. It just, you know, happened to cost them slightly, but because of the very much improved scoring system it's able to get rectified later in the relay really not much question when it came down to that they they brought it home (laughs) they brought it home um daniel gill once again looked phenomenal this guy he's very much got shades of joe morofsky where he just makes it look easy and i i don't know this if there is a key to this team's success it is the one-two punch of duel daniel gill and matisse and I, I see them doing fantastic things. Neither of us picked them for, for the win, huh? No, not the overall win. They were kind of like an honorable Man. mention there at the end. I went back and checked because I had to make sure which team you had picked. 
as your third match because you went back and forth so many times. So when I listened back, I realized I mentioned Iron Grip as like a as one that I don't know why we didn't pick, but they were there. Yeah, I mean. I would not in the slightest be stunned if they win this whole show. You know, past few episodes, we, we, we come across some teams where it's like, oh, yeah, they'll do some well, but I don't really expect them to win the whole show. This is a team would not be stunned in the slightest if they win. They, you know, are fantastic. Yeah, seeing them in this episode brings it, you know, reminds us again of why they're how good they are and the yeah, other potential to absolutely do that. So it came down to Lizard Kings and Iron Grip in the finals. And, uh... That was a heck of a finals. Dan, this was a battle. This is what I want to see. And this is what really made the episode for me. Is that we had, you know, the the beginning portion of the episode was kind of a build. Show uh, showcase both strong teams. And then it comes to, concludes in this epic battle. And it it's really wasn't um a demolishing from either team. You know, Iron Grip definitely struggled against lizard kings and vice versa you know they both showed their strengths their weaknesses it was kind of back and forth i mean i i loved everything about this final portion for a second for a quick second it looked like it might be a clean sweep of iron grip which was absolutely insane really so you thought daniel gill would lose huh not at first until they started going through the course and they were going back and forth it was absolutely not a blowout it was not as much of a given as you would think. Yeah, I mean, I I was so looking forward to this whole episode, seeing a matchup between Kyle Soderman and Daniel Gill. And it dis- didn't disappoint. I mean, it was so close, back and forth. But I, I have to say, I never, ever doubt the skills of Daniel Gill. The guy never, ever slows down. And he always seems calm and poised on each op- obstacle, even when he's behind. And I think that's to his strength, the fact that he always seems calm and collected. And in particular, when it comes to these long courses and this final portion, I think that's going to you know, do very, very well for him. And I think this might be a key to their success moving forward, is that they have that long-term stamina. And I don't know, um, in that particular matchup, we saw Kyle like go out the gate really strong, very fast, but... I was thinking in my head, man, this is a long course. And Kyle never really got tired. That's that's unfair to say. But it's one of those things where you can't just go on a full-on sprint for that long. If you're doing a marathon, this is kind of a bad analogy, but if you're doing a marathon, you don't want to, at the start line, go out in a sprint. You know, you always want to stay at a very fast jog. And I feel like that was kind of the story of that race. I think even more so the next race, the the relay to end all relays that came afterwards, that team Holy just imploded. It was what so happened, crazy, man? that run. I'm so glad that there was a second relay for them to kind of redeem themselves a little bit um, because, man, oh, man, I didn't know what was going on. We've never had every single member of a team fall. It's just never been a thing. Well, some, you know... <sighs> I can't say some teams are bad under pressure. That's the wrong term. But how would I say this? Like, if you know you have to make up a deficit, you just have to go more for broke, right? And I think that was going on in their heads where it's like, I have to go out, like, sell out pretty much. And I I think that going in their minds kind of messed them up. Yeah, it could be. They mean, they had the advantage coming into it. But you're right. Once Sarah fell, then Kyle had to try to make up time. And then when he fell, Hunter had to try to make up time. So each of them kind of led to this like cascading fail, maybe. Yeah, it was like a domino effect where, you know, you know, the rallying in all sports, the rally genuinely matters. The momentum factor psychologically really plays a part. In particular, when you're doing a race and every single second is so minute, that matters, man, and I, I don't blame them. Talk about a very high-pressure situation where a lot of them, this is their first time doing it. Actually, I think the entire team, right, for the Lizard Kings, this is their first time doing Ninja vs. Ninja, so, you know, there, there's a lot going on. I don't blame them. I, I can't say I'd do any better, right? <laughs> yeah, actually, Sarah was the alternate, I think, wasn't she? Isn't that where we saw her first? Oh, it might have been, yeah. I think for Team Ninja. Um, but yeah, in the second relay, they did much better. Sarah, unfortunately, did fall in the rings. Uh, but Kyle managed to close the gap a little bit. And uh, as fast as Hunter was, and very impressively fast, uh, Daniel did end up winning it for Iron Grip. 
and they took home the episode. Yeah, but man, it was close. Like at that final part, man, like <laughs> I could have easily seen saw Daniel get Gill get passed up, but I don't know, like both of them went so fast in that final portion with the Oh gosh, whatever it is that that the zigzag spider, climb. Yeah, the zigzag climb. Like they were going all out. Some of the fastest I've seen people do it this whole season. And, yeah, I don't know I that there's it. many. I think if almost anyone else was doing that zigzag climb, I think Hunter would have passed them. Like he was going incredibly fast. Yeah, I don't know. It was awesome, but Daniel Gill, man, technique wise and everything, guys got it in spades. So Iron Grip brought it home. A uh, fantastic episode that was just. Like you said, one of the best of the season. I, I really enjoyed it. It was really great. Mm-hmm. It was so fantastic, man. Yeah, let's take a look at next week and see what we got coming because it looks like to be one of... If anything's going to beat this week, I think next week's could do it. Ooh, we got two... We, we've got a clash coming up, man. We have Phoenix Force. That is Najee Richardson's team with Cassie Craig and Michael Torres. Oh, boy. Think Tank with Dr. Noah Kaufman. Leela Noon and Matt Wilder. Team TNT with Travis Rosen, Emily Durham, and Brett Sims. And Frostbite with Nick Hansen, Janique Levitt, and Jackson Meyer. Man, those are some strong, strong teams. Like, I'm really excited. You know, I, I chose Team TNT as my third pick, so I got to go with those guys. But format wise, of how this show is, I have to say, Phoenix Force is looking real good going into this episode. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm going over all these teams. As I said them out loud, my mind changed three times, I think. I don't know who to pick. I'm a little confused. Now that I'm looking through, I'm like, wait a minute. They have, all right. Yeah, I mean, I can't really discount Frostbite now that I'm looking at it. Nick Hansen's fantastic. So is Janique. Obviously, we saw what she could do. Deceptively fast. And Jackson Meyer is... The the Boy Scout guy, like he's really mm-hmm. good too. I'm gonna have to yeah. go with Frostbite. I, that's as much as I love Naji Richardson, one of my favorite ninjas, and same with Noah. You know what? As I read that out loud, I feel like Frostbite overall is just too strong to ignore. Going for the layup, man! I love it. Taking chances. That's a great pick. Great, great pick. As you already documented, there deceptively fast like they're, they're kind of underrated when you think nick hansen you don't really think speed but i've seen him in person i've seen him on the show guy can go kind of got some of that lance Picus vibe you know where it's like you you see a bigger guy and you're like oh you know it'll do well but when he's running you're like dude is going now i'm curious to see how well they do on the relays you know that's where they can really show off their strength and their upper body you know, Phoenix Force is a young team, so I'm looking to see them do well in the longer portions of the race. It just depends if they can get there. Uh, same thing for Team TNT. Keep an eye out. They're an older veteran team. They're going to have the experience, but how well will they do in the long distance relays and the long term um, back portion of the course where they're going to be tired going up against the young, you know, these young cats. So keep an eye out. Great stuff. And, you know, Think Tank's probably going to win because we haven't even talked about them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's... I, w- I would be very comfortable picking any of these teams. I really don't have a clear favorite here because yeah. we know, you know, Noah can definitely move when he wants to and Matt is insanely fast. So, yeah, I mean, really anyone can take it and I'm just going to pick Frostbite just because. Dope name. Very dope name. It used to be my online handle coincidentally enough frostbite <laughs> with, with a y though to make it extra techy and oh, nerdy shame on you yeah i think shame. that does that's a little bit of shame Ugh. um <laughs> so that is it for this week thank you all for listening if you'd like to reach out to me you can reach me as rich at ninjapodcast.com i am at ninja podcast on both instagram and twitter and bijan how can i reach you hit me up and turn on instagram at bijan 151 that is b-i-j-a-n 151 All right, thank you all for listening, and I hope you have a great week. Got a 20-page paper due in about seven hours. Let's go, son. Let's do this.